On this channel, I specialize in making really complex looking images easy to create. So just follow along with my step-by-step -step tutorial of this painting and you will amaze yourself. Now I've seen plenty of bubble tutorials here on YouTube and some of them are really great and they get you the, the overall shine effect. But I've not seen too many, if any, that actually represent the kind of rainbow sheen that really makes bubbles interesting. So you get those rainbow colors that circulate and swirl around the outside of the actual bubble. So I'm gonna try and show you ways, easy techniques to try and replicate that effect as well as the overall bubble look as well. So as always, I'm using the app Procreate on the iPad, but I don't see any reason why you couldn't use a different tablet and a different app and still follow the process and come up with very similar results. But as such, I've opened an A4 canvas, which is default within Procreate at 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 DPI. The color profile I'm using is the sRGB, the code that ends in 2.1. And it's here within the list, again, default within Procreate. In terms of the brushes, I only use the free brushes that come with the app. And as such, I'm gonna be using the airbrushing soft brush. Possibly, I might use something like the luminance, flare, or light pen, but we'll see. In terms of the colors, I've pre-selected a color palette here, which is not many colors. So there's not too many codes to make a note of, but in terms of that, if you go to the value section, there is a section where you can type the hexadecimal codes one at a time, and each of those codes is down in the video description. Once you press enter, each color will appear up here, and you can tap it to get it yourself. Well, next to the codes in the description is a link that takes you to my Patreon page, and you can just save some time and download the whole file for free. And if you want to support this content and my channel, then down in the video description, there's also a link that takes you to my Patreon, and you can become a member and gain access to exclusive content, as well as the tutorials here. Okay, with all that said and done, let's get started. So we're gonna tap on the background color. Now you can see I've got the disc selected, but you have different options down here. You do have the classic option. I think by default, it will put you on the disc anyway, but if you're not, make sure you have selected that. For the background, I'm gonna to go to this area. Now it happens to be within the red, but it doesn't matter where it is on the different hues. As long as you double tap in the darkest part of it, it will snap to the darkest version of that color, which is obviously gonna be just black. That takes care of the background. On layer one, we're going to have to come up with the circle for the bubble. Now the absolute easiest way of doing that is to go to the selection tool here, go onto ellipse and start somewhere near the top, drag down until you've got an ellipse that is probably similar distance at the top and bottom, fills enough of the canvas, and then just put another finger down and it snaps to a circle like that. So if you're not sure about that, I'll do that again. Selection tool, ellipse, start it somewhere near the top, drag it down so it seems to be equal distance there at the top and bottom. You may as well spread it this way as well. Put your finger down, it snaps to a circle. Lift, let go of your Apple Pencil and your finger and you've got a nice circle. It's a little bit offset to one side, doesn't really matter. I'll just zoom in so it becomes more central anyway. Now you don't want to deselect that selection tool we wanna keep it out like that because now on this layer, we can start adding things and it will only add it within the confines of that circle area, which is brilliant. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to our brushes, airbrushing, soft brush. I'm gonna put the brush size at around 7%. We'll put it quite strong, it's around 50% opacity. Go to our colors. I'm skipping around a little bit with the colors, but don't worry, I'm gonna to go to the green first. And I want to start high up on this part of the circle and just create a little bit of a swirl shape. Then I'm gonna go back to my colors, go to the blue color, and just clipping the edge of there. I want to do blue on either sides. I don't want to destroy the green, but I do want ever so slight overlap there. Then go back to my colors. I'm gonna go from the green to the blue to this really nice sort of pink. And again, we've got a hint of an overlap, but we want to preserve some of that blue so we can add it here as well. Then we go from that color, we'll go to this, not quite the white, but the next yellow. We don't want to eliminate all of that pink. We don't want any black gaps to appear either, but we're just gonna have it sort of overlap like that. Then we can go back to the green color. Have some green over here. Then blue we get a repetition. 
then we go to this pink color and probably if you've done it a little bit like mine it should take you right up to the very edge like that now i'm going to go to the adjustments gaussian blur i'm just going to blur that in a bit not too drastically maybe to about 10 percent deselect the adjustments then i'm going to go back to the adjustments i'm going to go onto the liquify i'm going to go onto the swirl left or right doesn't really matter i'm going to choose left i'm probably going to put the size at around 50 and the pressure at 50 nothing for the distortion or momentum and then somewhere in the center i'm going to start doing a few swirls and then maybe i'll try this the twirl right and create a few more we're just starting a sense of kind of ripples now you don't want to do too much of that because i'm now going to go to the push again 50 and 50 on those settings and i'm just going to start pushing it around playing around with some of these ideas now we want to preserve something of the outside shape so if it does start to push in from there then you can just push it back out make sure you know that's a little bit preserved as an edge we don't want to lose that what i do want to do is start pushing colors so they kind of skim around that edge a little bit so the top part i'm just going to nudge them up don't really care about the center bit that can pretty much do what it wants but certainly at this outside edge i want it to start to gather round and kind of bunch up in that area then maybe i can go on the expand same settings i can start to just push some of these colors around a little bit maybe just have them exaggerated maybe go back to the push maybe i'll turn it down a little bit to 30 percent maybe i can just control that and just find some shapes that i think look good now we're tempted to keep these kind of shapes quite circular if you get anything that's too angular maybe soften that in a little bit keep it more rounded to a certain point anyway maybe extend some of these colors around so they look like they actually gathering around the edge of a circle whether that's pushing it one way or the other doesn't really matter none of this is tricky maybe i'll increase the size of the push to 50 again i uh, just want to bring some more of this blue and green back into the central area i think it's some of the colors that i like the most maybe just start to swirl it around a little bit like this that could really create quite a nice effect again just push it towards the edges if it seems like it's detaching from there a few more nudges i think i'm done manipulating these colors just pushing out some of this luminous kind of green a little bit less of that i think will be good maybe tuck that in a little bit up here i quite like it circling around a bit more you play around with it i wouldn't say there's any right and wrong with this you just want to kind of make it interesting do some sort of circling round it will distort it more whichever way around you think works better entirely up to yourself okay i'll leave it there so at this point i can deselect the adjustments and deselect the selection tool because we now have a solid shape to work with on a layer go to the selection and now we can select the background we're going to select the inverts or the inverse of that selection so now it has although it <laughs> seems a bit strange it has it's actually selected the inside of that area and we'll notice that when we create a new layer and if we untick that you can probably make out on camera now we've got the lines and the center of that circle now if that's not very clear i'll just turn the mask visibility up so you can really see within the settings so now it should be really super noticeable i'll put the background layer back on though but i'm going to turn the opacity of it down so tap on the little n and scroll it back or slide it back probably somewhere to about the 30 percent for now make sure the top layer is selected i'm going to go with the soft brush at this point it, it kind of is your choice where to start with the colors so i'm probably going to start with some of the the blue i'm going to put the size at about five percent turn the opacity down somewhat to about 30 and i'm just going to clip around the very edge now we've got this selection on the selection tool which means we cannot add anything to this area it's going to keep all of our marks and colors all to within the center area of the bubble again now i'm just going in and around some of these shapes i do generally want to clip it around the edge but i'm going to take a little bit of notice of what colors 
are actually within the image itself. So I've got some nice blues here where we go from the green to the blue. So I'm just adding some of it into that area too. But generally, I just want to clip it around the edge as well. A little bit less where we've got yellows and pinks, but certainly around this area where we've got more of the blue within the actual initial colors, then we can add more of it there too. Change maybe to this second pink, or second color, which is pink. And then we can start to just add a little bit of that in there as well. Kind of corresponds to some of the colors that are in the center area. And around this area too, nothing wrong with having hints of it in here. Again, we can have it encroaching a little bit into some of the center area, bleeding through, connecting to the swirls of colors that we've already created, but not too much. Let's try the, we'll try the third from the right, that orangey yellow. Again, same principle. Connect it to some of the swirls a little bit. Don't overdo that. And in this area too, again, connect it up to the little, the colors we've already established not too much. You can have it extending across into the blue areas and in places too. Now it almost doesn't matter really where you start adding these. You can you can cross these boundaries and not worry whether it, it's going over a, an area where there's predominantly blue or red. It doesn't really matter. I just like to start by just responding to some of the things that are already there a little bit. I think it just helps bind the two areas together a little bit. I'm gonna to go to the green, and perhaps we've just got an area here. Where we've got the green and we can bring some of that light in there as well. Not all the way, just a hint. It's important not to add too much of the vibrancy to the whole image. I think if you do too much of it, it's, it's just gonna, it's not gonna keep that naturalistic look. We want to keep it a little bit subdued. Let's just say we took away the bottom layer. You can see it's not too much of it, and that's perfect. I think I'm going to go back to the blue, still 5% size, but I'm going to turn it down to 15% opacity. And I think I just like to bring some of this a hint more into the center areas. I'm just softly kind of scribbling it over. Maybe go over some of the areas a hint where the blue should be, but again, not too much. Just going around the peripheral, the edge of our bubble. I really, I think I, I prefer the blue the most. The blue and the, the pink, I think, are the colors that I really want to pronounce the most. So perhaps alternate between those. I've got this warmer pink. I'll try some of that, maybe. Turn it down a hint. 5% size. Maybe I just want to ramp that up in one or two places too, where I feel that it would benefit. I'm not evenly distributed. I think I'm going to create a new layer. And again, it should only really allow me to add anything to the inside of this shape. You know, it's still going to be limited to the selected area that we've established right from the outset. So still with a soft brush, I'm going to put it down to 3% size and 30% opacity. And I'm just going to allow this to act as a kind of contrast to some of the blue areas. And then I could go in with the blue similarly and allow it to be a bit of a contrast with the warmer pink areas. Maybe even go in with the yellow, find which areas that might contrast quite nicely with. With this layer, just change the N to scroll down, try the add, and I think that just really makes it stand out and pop a little bit more on those edges, which is really nice. I think I might go with the white and just start adding some points of light now, maybe with some that are really there on the edge, just bringing it. Again, it's still on the 3% size and 30% opacity within the soft airbrush. And we could really start just bringing in, and we could start bringing in some really bright moments around the edge of that bubble. And I think with still with the soft brush, I'm gonna put it up from 3% to about 15%, down to about 10%, and I'm just going to start bringing in a real light area over here and maybe one offset it over on this side too. And it's really bringing out some of the colors, which is really nice. We can allow it to encroach a little bit. I'm just tapping it across that center area. I don't really want to do too much in the very center. 
but I'm allowing it to build up a little bit. Maybe it's a little bit here at the top and a little bit more here at the bottom. Reduce the size of the brush back down to 3% and back up to 30%. And in the center of these, one of the glows, I'm just going to start adding some more kind of points of light, maybe something over here too. Just circle it in around that lightly a little bit. We could even try going to the adjustments, bloom, scrolling that. Oh, it doesn't take much to really flare out to really too much exaggerated, I would say. But when you put it back to nothing, you can see that a little bit goes quite a long way. So I'm going to put it up to about 10%. Deselect that, zoom back out. And I think that's starting to work quite nicely. Perhaps I'll just go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur that in a touch to about the 10%. Looking at it, what else do I need to do? I think the only thing I'd like to do is just make the outer edges just a little bit more prominent. So I'm gonna do that with some of the highlight colors as well. So the pink, 3% size, 30% opacity. And I think I'll start with a strong pink around this edge. Zoom in a touch so you can really see it. So I'm gonna do that side then. Maybe I'll go to the yellow, second from the right, and just on the outside of that pink, I'll add a hint of that just to really make it even brighter. Maybe I'll then for the other side, go for the blue and just sort of kiss the outside of it with the blue. Why not? Then maybe go in with the green. Again, just a hint of that around the, just around the blue itself, just so it goes slightly from blue it's a very slim, slight green on the very edge. Really not much of it. So back out, and I think that's working a bit better. I think I'll go back in with the white. I think I just want to further enhance those white spots. Just make them really sharp and really actual points of light. Maybe just a couple of extra ones too, for good measure. Maybe we could just add something to the very edges here and there. Yeah, I think I'll just add a few points around the bubble. Just ramping up some of the white spots in some areas. Why not make it just a little bit more exaggerated? You can also play around with the initial layer. You can see it without or with. I think it's bent benefited definitely with. You can again play around with the different layers. It might be that one of the layers you think is you know, counterproductive. You might prefer it, for example, without the layer two, or maybe with it, but maybe just dial back a little bit. So you could try it at maybe 50% rather than 100. Just find the point where you think it works best. So I'm gonna dial it back just a little bit, not to 50, but to about 80. In terms of that original layer, we set it to 30. And you might find it works a bit a bit higher up, depending on what you want to do as a background. If you've got a solid black background like I'm using, and actually less sometimes is more, but even so, I quite like it at the 40%. I think that works really nicely. I'm gonna to go to the selection tool and deselect it, and now you can see it with a pure black background to really get a sense of it. And just looking at some of the points of light around the edge, we could try the luminance flare I was a little bit reluctant of using this, so maybe I'll do it on a separate layer. Change the end to the add, although the luminance brushes should pretty much create that effect anyway, but still. Keep it on the white, set the flare brush, I don't know. We don't want it too exaggerated, so maybe about 10%, 100% opacity. Maybe just go for that one. Quite like it around the edges, I think that works. Try to get it where you think the center of that light source should be, something like that. And we could even then go back to the airbrush, choose a suitable color, go for the pink. Maybe put that up to 4% size, low at about 10. And I could just surround that perhaps with a, just a hint more of a glow from this warm color too. Just help soften it in. Uh, another thing we can do, perhaps we could just merge all those layers together when we're happy with it. We could slide and duplicate. We can select the transform put it on uniform so it doesn't distort it when you change the size. And we could move this around, use a little green symbol, spin it around a little bit, and you can create more of them. And perhaps with ones that are more background, you can go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, 
and just blur it in somewhat to really knock it back. And obviously we can do that multiple times. So maybe we'll just with that layer, we'll duplicate it and duplicate again. And then we've got a couple now that we can move around, put one so it overlaps, move that one again so it overlaps, maybe reduce the size, put it over here. The first version is that center one, or is that bottom one? So I'm gonna put that at the top, very top so it dominates over all the others. And then we can just keep building them up. Maybe do some of the very background ones. Let's go for the small one. Again, adjustments, Gaussian blur. We could really blur it in even more. And we can really create multiples this way. So slide, duplicate, and keep placing them around. I think it works really nicely. Duplicates, just keep track of where where the main one is. I guess if you've put it at the top, it's easy to remember. Anything else is just toggle it on and off, duplicate it, move it. Should be easy enough to keep track of it. Duplicate, find another one. I want a fairly large one. That was quite a big one here. Just move it to the side. This one, duplicate. Maybe I can have a decent size one. I don't know, up here, up there. Now, another thing you can do with all these different versions is play around with the color. So I'm gonna go for one that's really noticeable, that one, for example. I can go to the adjustments, hue, saturation, and brightness, and I can go to the hue, and I can just move the colors a hint in different directions, and it will just give it it's a little bit more of a character of its own. So that is definitely more green, which I think helps separate it from the main one. Let's choose that one over on the right. I'll zoom in a bit more. I realize I've zoomed out quite a lot. So we'll zoom in, adjustments, hue, saturation, and brightness, and we're going for this one. Again, we can dial this more this way. We don't really want to lose the kind of color scheme, so you're gonna to have to find something that feels relatively close to the same color scheme, but we're just gonna put the emphasis somewhere slightly different. Maybe just a hint more this way, maybe even more in fact. I don't want the red, so I want to avoid that. Maybe over this way a little bit more. Go for that one over there. Again, adjust the colors somewhat. I'm going to condense everything by pinching it together other than the top layer. So that's all in one layer. Slide and duplicate, transform, flip it horizontally and vertically, change the scale. And again, we can just radically increase the number and perhaps I'll just go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur that in even more. Maybe the top one, I'll just, it looks a little bit artificially in the center now, so I'll just nudge that off to the side so it doesn't look quite so fake. Right, so I'll just go to the bottom layer, duplicate it one more time. It's easy to get carried away with this, but I'm enjoying the process, so just reduce them even further. Maybe just put them at the very bottom. Then I can go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it in even more. Again, to about the 10%, and that's quite dramatic. So you've got really sharp contrast from the foreground and some really blurred background ones now. Okay, I'm gonna leave that at that point before I get too carried away. I hope that's been interesting and you've learned some tricks and techniques that you can actually use yourself. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and don't forget the bell notification to make sure you're notified of all my future videos too. I have links down in the video description to my Instagram and a Facebook group. So if you do have a go at this tutorial or any of my other ones, then you can tag me on Instagram or post your work to the Facebook group and get feedback from myself and also other members of the group. Thanks again for watching. I shall see you again soon. Bye for now.